QuickBooks Online, how to add inventory. Hey there, everyone. This is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. I have a sample QuickBooks file uh, up on the screen here. I want to show you how to add inventory. Now, QuickBooks Online calls it products and services um, instead of an item list, which is what it's called in QuickBooks Desktop. So products and services list. All right, so first of all, you've got to go in and look at what you have set up. So we're gonna to go to the sales menu over here and go down to products and services. So if we look here, you can see all these different products and services and what they have. You'll see the type. So there's a lot of services. There's some inventory of pumps, rock fountains, etc. So let's say that we want to add a new item that we're going to be selling. All right, so what you're gonna do is go up to new and you'll see here it gives you the option of these various products and services. Since this is inventory and we're going to carry it, we're going to choose inventory. So first you're going to choose the name of your inventory. So let's call this drip line and that's a drip line for irrigation. Uh, if you have a SKU number, you, of course, can add that here. And then under the category, okay, we're going to put this under design. And let's say we'll put it under fountains, okay? Well, actually, I'll tell you what. Let's put it under sprinklers only because it's a drip line, and most likely that would be under sprinklers. All right, so our initial quantity on hand. Generally, you do need to fill this in even if you have nothing. Now, initial quantity on hand is if you've been in business and you're just starting to use QuickBooks Online. You didn't convert from desktop or anything like that. You're just starting to use QuickBooks Online. You would go in and say, okay, as of what date down here, how many of these do I have? And that way you can accurately track your drip line uh, inventory in QuickBooks. Now, we're going to assume that we have never carried this. So we're going to put in zero and we're going to put in today's date and then reorder point. If you want QuickBooks to remind you, okay, because it'll track how much you have on hand. If you want QuickBooks to remind you when to reorder, then you put in a number here, okay? Inventory asset account. So when you purchase inventory, it is an asset on your balance sheet until you sell it. And when you sell it, then it becomes uh, an expense on your profit and loss statement. That expense is generally cost of goods sold. Now you can create various sub accounts for inventory categories. This sample file just has inventory asset, which is fine for our pur purposes here. All right, description. So when you sell this, whether it's a sales receipt, invoice, whatever it is, you want it to bring up some kind of description. Now, if you put nothing here, it'll show nothing on the invoice or sales receipt, and you can always type that in later. But it's, it's probably a good practice just to put something in here. We're going to say this is 100 feet drip line 12 inch spacing. Okay. Our sales price, when we enter this, we're going to say, let's say this is $69.99. And the default account is going to be sales of product income. Again, just like the inventory account, you can change this. You can set up various accounts depending on how you want to see it. Now, one word about the sales price, and this also applies to the cost down here. When you enter this, this will be the default price that shows up on your invoice or sales receipt. If you want to change this, you can change it on the face of the invoice or sales receipt. Or if you just have an across the board price increase, you can go into this item, this product and service, and change this price and it'll default to be the new price. All right, sales tax, yes, taxable item when you sell it. Uh, this is not the focus of this video, so I won't go into that too much and purchase information. So if you purchase this from a vendor and you do a purchase order, just like the sales form, when you sell it, you may want something to default in the description when you purchase it. For time purposes, I'm gonna leave this blank, but you of course can put in the information. Now the cost, we'll say that this is $19.99, that's what it costs you to buy it from your supplier. 
And again, just like I said, you can change this on the face of the purchase order and then the expense account. It is going to be cost of goods sold when you sell it and you can set up additional accounts or sub accounts for how you want to see this. And then preferred vendor. If you have a preferred vendor, you can put that here. Okay, so we're going to save and close. All right, and you will see that when we come down here, if we go under, let's see, sprinklers, you'll see our drip line right here, inventory. And we have zero on hand, okay? So the reorder point is five and we have zero. So it's telling us, hey, you need to reorder some of this stuff. All right, so let's say that we, uh, we order this. I'm not gonna go through the purchase order, but let's say we get a bill. We just get a bill for, we, we call up our vendor and we say, hey, we need 20 rolls of this stuff. And so we're going to go in and enter a bill. We get this bill for 20 rolls of this, vendors bill, okay? So we're gonna say that uh, we bought it from Chin's Gas and Oil. They sell drip line as well. <laughs> all right, mailing address, all this will default depending on the vendor and how it's set up. We'll say it's a net 30 terms, the bill date 4757. Now, bill number, we'll put in that we got an invoice number for this. Now, down here, what you have to do, you've got category or item. Category details are generally just going to be expenses. Item details is when you're adding inventory. So we're going to go in here and you have to select the product or service. So we're going to say drip line and we are going to say that we bought 20, 1999, 399.80. All right. And we'll say that this is the bill that we got. Okay. Now you'll see here balance due 399.80, chins, gas and oil, and we ordered 20 of these. So if I save and close, and go back to my products and services list, you're going to see that we now have 20 of these on hand. And when I, let's say I sell one, I put it on a sales receipt, this will go down to 19. And so this will track your inventory. Okay, so those are the basics in QuickBooks Online, how to add inventory. Any questions, any comments, feel free to leave those below and I will see you in another video.